Good morning everybody, it is Wednesday, we are here for a, another vlog. Today, it's relatively early for me to start filming today, it is 8.30 in the morning. I've just made my cup of coffee, Granger and I have had a nice walk. It's been very cold these mornings, but the sun's been out, uh, especially this morning, so that's good. And today I have a few things to do. I have some life admin -y stuff to do this morning. I need to make a dentist appointment. Uh, I need to do a shopping list. I <laughs> need to get some washing on, of course, because it is Wednesday and it's my washing day. And But the fun stuff is going to be later. I am going to quilt my table runner, finally. <laughs> it has not been done as yet. That's kind of the plan for today. Um, like I said, I've got to start this morning with some boring stuff and uh, yeah, but for now I'm going to drink my coffee and I think I might do some weaving on Granger's new dog lead. Uh, my patrons heard about that on Monday or Tuesday. I put it up a day late, but yes, I am weaving Granger a new lead. So um, yeah, that is where we stand for this morning. I might chuck some YouTube on, do a little bit of weaving, uh, drink my coffee, and then I'll get on to the boring life admin stuff. So here we have Granger in his natural element, curled up on his bed. Isn't that right? He is. Simon and I put these curtains up over the weekend, which you may have seen on Instagram, but they are just making me happy. So yeah, I thought I would share them here on the vlog, combined with my lovely bedspread that I love. <laughs> yeah, I'm really quite happy with my bedroom right now. It's probably the only room in the house that I like. Good afternoon, everybody. It's now after one o'clock. Um, the stuff I had to do this morning took a really long time. Uh, I got my dentist appointment booked in. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but I can't get in till November, so that's great for my broken filling. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I've done everything that I needed to do. I've done my shopping list. I've done, yeah, I've marked off pretty much everything on my list. So now the laundry is done. I can get on to doing some quilting. So I've just set everything up. I've just wound my bobbin, got my Supreme slider in place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some meandering on my table topper. Um, I've chosen a brown variegated thread so I'm hoping that's going to look really good on that top with that more vintagey type of fabric. Let's hope that I can keep my tension in check because that is something that I do have a little bit of issues. I go a little bit fast around the corners and I end up with a little bit of eyelashing on the back so I need to be really conscious of those corners that I do and and don't do them too too fast so that I can get a better result so I'm going to move over to where I am doing my quilting which is over here which is why I've got light on me because I've got the light on ready to go and yeah start doing some quilting so you guys have already seen this this is my topper um, it has this brown sort of it's a charcoal it's called charcoal I believe the colorway but it does come off a little bit on the brown side and the um, the vintage lane kind of fabrics I think they'll look really good with the brown thread on them because there is you know more like these dark burgundies and like the red here I think the brown that it, it's a variegated as I said I'll show you that now so there's the variegated thread. So it basically goes through like a dark brown through a mid brown and cream. And I'm, I'm hoping that's going to look really good. So uh, I guess all that's left to do is to get me gloves on and start quilting. I'm starting off here in the corner, which after the snafu that I revealed to you a little bit later in the video was maybe not the best idea. But I do like to start kind of off the edge when I'm quilting, uh, just so that my threads are on the batting side instead of coming up through my work. 
And something you have to remember when you're doing free motion quilting, if you haven't done it before, is that you should feel free to scrunch and move your quilt as much as you need to, you know, make it comfortable for you to be doing the quilting. These gloves that I'm using here are just some sort of garden gloves. Uh, they are grippy enough, they work, they're, they're a little bit loose on my hands, which is probably not ideal. Uh, but they are grippy enough to be able to quilt with and of course you want to take out your pins as you get to them. And you might be able to notice here when I'm placing my hands on the quilting, I'm sort of putting a little bit of tension. I'm, I'm pulling my hands slightly apart just to give it a bit more tension on the top, on the quilt itself. And here you see I'm making my binding. My binding is probably the only part of my quilting experience that I press my seams open. I find it easier to hand sew the binding down when I'm finished. So I use two and a half inch strips. I'm thinking of changing to two inch because it does come quite far around the back. Uh, but basically, yes, I use a two and a half inch strip and I just fold it in half and press it down. And of course, before you add your binding, you want to trim down your quilt so you don't have that excess batting and backing around the sides. When I did this here, I just measured in, uh, you know, a, a, because I had nice long seams on the edges, I just lined up a measurement on my ruler and just cut up the side so it was nice and straight and square. And you might have seen that there was a little bit of my top come off in that strip of edging there and that's fine it's it's squaring it all up and giving me a nice straight edge so the way i do my uh, mitered edges my mitered corners in my quilting i actually use a tutorial that i saw by krista walton on uh, a craftsy class that i I followed uh, with her so I mean if you would like to see any tutorials about any of this uh, quilting stuff like I will try and get much better angles than what I am able to do right at this moment and um, I will of course do some tutorials for you if you'd like just let me know in the comments hello everybody I'm here it is the end of the day I have done as much as I can on the machine on my my table topper I hope you were able to actually see some of what I filmed it's always really hard I don't have an overhead uh, camera set up so I have to try and get my tripod sitting where hopefully you can see but yes I have done my quilting on this hopefully you can see the threads on there it is I did as I said a meander and it took a little while for me to warm up. I haven't done this for a little while, so my initial meanders were a little bit jaggedy, but I did get quite smooth um, towards the end. And it looks like most of my um, tension was pretty good on the back. So I think this is closer to the end. So there's not a lot like my, I don't really have too many eyelashes coming through. Right at the beginning, there's a couple couple of areas like here if you if you don't know what I mean about eyelashing you see this here where the top thread has been pulled through to the back and then you get these little loops that's called eyelashing so there was a little bit at the beginning but by the end um, I was I was pretty well set and I knew what I was doing um, I did have a little bit of a snafu on the back that I or a couple of them that I didn't realize was occurring um, this is probably due to my sandwiching and I really I think I need to look at doing something different for when I sandwich my quilts because I think um, yeah I'm 
it's not very accurate and I'll show you why. I have developed, I have a couple of puckers. You can see one here and then there's a really large one here. Um, so I have got puckers on the back of my table topper. So it's not going to matter that much. It's just for me to use on my coffee table. So it's not like it's a gift that someone else is going to see it and go, Oh my God, they didn't do a very good job here. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that is definitely something that would be remedied by having better sandwiching processes. Yes. I think that's something I'm going to have to investigate because I don't want to have this sort of puckering on the back. Cause this is actually quite bad. Um, I was really quite annoyed, but <laughs> you know, it's just for us. It's just for us to use. It might get disguised when I give this a wash and it shrinks up a little bit. So hopefully it won't be too bad. But for now, I'm going to get out my hand sewing uh, kit. This is my little, um, oof, it's, everything's falling out of it. But this is my little um, English paper piecing kit. And um, got some little bits in here. Uh, basically, it's a, a makeup um organizer like a travel organizer and this is how I um, keep my paper piecing organized so yeah I've got my sewing kit out and I'm gonna get to hand sewing down uh, my binding so um, I just use the same fabric as the back and I'm just going to fold it over and hand stitch whip stitch the back so yeah that is what I'm gonna do now so thank you for hanging out with me today I do hope that you have enjoyed it I hope it was uh, you know you could see what was happening I don't I never quite know uh, but yeah if you would like to please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already and yeah I will catch you in the next video um, please take care of yourselves and I hope you're getting lots of crafty things in in all your spare time and yeah, take care. I'll see you next week. Bye.